Hi you guys and welcome back to Life with Lene. It's fall, but winter is definitely coming. The days seem to be getting a little bit shorter. It's getting darker earlier and with the darkness comes depression sometimes. So we're going to be talking about seasonal depression, different ways that we can fight it and we can try to prevent going into that deep dark sadness that tends to come with the winter coldness. So with the winter months, it tends to bring mood changes, changes in our appetite, most importantly, changes in our sleep patterns, and all of those things combined can cause some major issues with us. As humans, we tend to malfunction in the winter months for some reason, right? A lot of it has to do with underlying vitamin D deficiency, which some of us already have when the sun is already out. And when the sun disappears, it just makes that even worse. So let's jump into a couple of ways that we are going to fight seasonal depression this year. Starting with number one, and that is get as much natural sunlight as possible. Now for my people who live up north, this is hard. Uh, trust me when I say I am an Alaska girly and it's, it's so difficult when you live up north, especially where I'm from. It is dark so much of the winter months that it's hard to even see the sunshine when it is out. Um, I remember growing up as a kid, it would be dark when we leave the house in the morning to go to school and it would be dark on our way back home. The only time I got to enjoy the sunshine was on our time during recess and I would soak up as much sun as possible most of the time until there was like a bear or a moose that would come on the playground and force us to go back inside, which would make all of us so sad, right? But for us as adults, it's kind of the same thing. A lot of states that we live in, it's going to be dark. Uh, it gets dark, uh, well, it's dark in the morning when we leave for work sometimes, and then it's dark in the evening by the time we're headed home. So as much as you possibly can, your goal is to get as much sunlight as possible, whether that mean a little bit of it on your commute on your way to work, taking walks on your lunch break outside, um, if you do have a window in your office, wherever you work, opening up that window to get as much of the sunshine in as possible, wherever you can sneak in as much natural sunlight as possible, squeeze it in and relish in it. Your body will thank you for that natural source of vitamin D. Now we all know that the sun, natural sunlight is a great source of vitamin D, but it is also a great natural mood booster, just like number two, which is exercise. Now exercising is going to help your body to release all of the endorphins and that endorphin rush that you get from working out is a great way to boost your mood. Now exercising does not have to be anything specific. Moving your body in the way that you enjoy moving your body is always going to be the best mood booster. Now for me, I love running. Running is my natural therapy that I enjoy, but I enjoy running outside. So for me, I'm already trying to look into some ways that I can continue my run routine that I've established over the summer and I've really fallen in love with because I am not a fan of running outside. I'll be honest with you, my body shuts down in the cold. So I am looking for a um, treadmill that I can purchase so that I can continue with my run routine and just move that routine inside. But other things that you could consider is adding just a uh, short workouts into your routine, a short 15 to 20 minute workout, whether it be lifting some light weights, doing a fun workout video from one of your favorite, like, I don't know, kickboxing instructors, or even those online dance videos can be fun. Anything to move your body, increase those natural endorphins, the happy endorphins in your body that um, increase your overall mood is going to be great. So don't make it a chore, make it something that you look forward to at the end of the day, beginning of the day, or heck, even on your lunch break. Make sure that it's something that's fun that you're not going to deem as like a chore that you have to do because that's going to decrease the actual rate of you wanting to do it. So if it's something fun, upbeat, um, and enjoyable, then you are more likely to, in to continue to do it over the days and maybe even more often throughout your week. Number three is stress management. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm already stressed out, it tends to be super easy for me to get into an even deeper slump. 
Like, of course I'm stressed out. I don't want to get out of my bed from under my warm, cozy blankets. And it could sometimes lead to bed rotting. So when it comes to stress management, of course there are things that we cannot avoid that stress us out, like sometimes work and things like that. But what I would suggest is before it gets cold, create a plan for yourself of what you are going to do to keep your mood up and to manage your stress. If you already anticipate some big stressors that are coming up or just some general stressors that you um, that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, write those things down and start to come up with some different ideas of how you're going to combat them. For example, if you have a very stressful commute to work, because now it's dark outside and your commute is a long commute, find something enjoyable like a podcast that you can enjoy listening to or an audiobook that's going to keep you engaged so that your commutes don't seem as bad. Um, finding ways to manage your stress and thinking about those things ahead of time versus when you're in the thick of the stress is going to help you to better manage them before things escalate and escalate and escalate and you find yourself in that deep, darkness of depression that could be. Now, a couple of great ways that you can work on stress management include journaling your thoughts, aromatherapy, yoga, practicing mindfulness, whether it be via prayer or meditation, or just a couple of ideas. I will list a couple more here for you guys. You don't have to do all of them. Of course, picking a lot of different things and not sticking to one could add to the stress level that you're already having. So pick one that you like and give it a try. If you don't like it or you find that it's not working for you for your stress management, you can always jump to try something new. But pick something that you feel is going to help to lower your stress level and something that you feel that you can easily fit into your day-to-day -day schedule. Next is socializing. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I do not like being outside in the cold. So during the winter months, I tend to go to work and come home and that's it. So one thing that seems so counterintuitive when it's cold outside is actually going outside. But socializing is once again a natural mood booster. So make a list or a calendar of some different events that are coming up in your local community um, or make a list of things with some of your friends and family and loved ones that you could possibly see yourself doing that are going to allow you to get out of the house and have a good time. These activities do not have to be outdoor activities if you're not an outdoor cold winter type of person. But simple things like, I'll give you an example, me and my friends are doing a pumpkin painting night where we are going to have fancy hot cocoa and paint cute pumpkins while we just have a girls night and do girl chat. Your ideas of what you're doing don't have to be overcomplicated and they don't have to be expensive. It could be as simple as going out to coffee with a good friend once a week or having a movie night in with some friends. Um, you do whatever is going to lighten your mood and allow you to be stress-free and still be sociable, meaning getting out of the house and talking to more than just the walls. Um, and make sure that you are staying involved with your community, whether it be your close group of friends your family, or even if it's just business associates getting out to do like a networking event. But don't stay trapped in your home this winter. There are a lot of great places to find different local events that you have going on in your city. Eventbrite is one of my favorites. You are able to do a search based off of the different types of activities that you like and also by your city and it will show you a plethora of different ideas from networking events, um, to different community fall festivals and things like that. Eventbrite has so many great ideas. The next place that I love finding events is just on social media. Um, Instagram, you can always do a search by your city and you will see a plethora of ideas on there about local events that are going on. Some of them are paid events where you have to pay to get in or pay for the supplies if it's like a paint and sip type of night or things like that. But there are, um, you can always do a search for low cost activities and um, it would be a great way for you to get out and network and meet new people. Lastly, my favorite, favorite, favorite thing that I love sharing with everyone, I've used this tool for years, is meetup.com. Now, meetup.com, you can use the website or you can use the meetup app. And it's kind of like Pinterest when you first sign up, you're gonna put all of the different things that you're interested in 
I usually suggest to people that you put the things like your hobbies that you are currently doing, but maybe even click on a couple of hobbies that you've been interested in trying, but you haven't taken the plunge into trying them yet. Um, and once you put those different things and you put your city, you can even put the distance of how far you're willing to travel to do these activities. And it is going to show you a long list of different groups within those parameters. Um, now these groups, usually um, they can range from groups of like five all the way up to 500 or possibly more. But the great thing about this is even if you are not a huge social butterfly and you don't enjoy going to groups of lar like larger groups, some of the groups have subgroups within them and they plan different events. So each group will show a list of their upcoming events and you can easily click on the events to find out the information about what they're gonna be doing and where the event is held. And then you can simply say that you're going. Some groups charge an annual um, fee for supplies and different things like that. I've seen anywhere from $20 for an annual fee to $100, but all of that will be listed on the groups. And when I tell you there are so many different creative groups on this app, it is amazing to me. Now, my mom is actually the one who suggested this to me when I first moved to Dallas back in 2014. I didn't know anybody in Dallas. It was just me and my son, and I was a little bit nervous about moving there. This would be the first time that I'm doing a move that was not based on like the military. And so I had to find a ways to get out and network. And I actually signed up for a mom group um, where it was a group of moms and we went to different events with our kiddos. I signed up for a Bible study group, I signed up for a tennis group, and I signed up for a salsa dancing group. Now, as you just heard, these groups are completely different. And some of them, you, they'll be like adults only. Some of them, you can have kids involved. But when I tell you there's a little bit of everything on there for everyone, this site is amazing. Um, I recently kind of remembered it and I jumped on for the city of Austin because I had really not been, um, been getting out and doing as much as I want to do since I've moved here to Austin. I've been so busy with working and building my business that I really haven't gotten out to socialize as much as I would like and I am interested in expanding my social circle. So if you guys are interested, I would love to actually show you guys the app one day. Maybe I'll do a separate video on Meetup and show you some of the groups that I've signed up for and kind of give you some feedback on what, um, what I've enjoyed and the different types of groups that I've chosen to join. Um, so far, I have looked into a salsa dancing group again, um, as well as a lot of networking groups. I've joined a couple that are like woman entrepreneur groups or entrepreneurs in Austin. Um, so I'm really excited about jumping back onto this app. I have updated my settings and I'm ready to get out there and mingle. I do not want to be a hermit crab or go into hibernation this winter. So I will try my best to keep you guys posted on some of the fun things that I get into this winter and me trying to be a social butterfly and get to know uh, more people and do more things here in Austin, Texas. The change in seasons and the weather plays a huge impact on your immunity and your overall wellness during winter months. So the next topic that we're gonna jump into is going to be taking your vitamins. So there are plenty of vitamins that you can take to keep you healthy, to boost your immunity, and to just help you feel overall better during the winter months. There's a lot of vitamins that we all could be taking, right? But it's very hard sometimes to stay on top of them. I would recommend that you start a vitamin routine for yourself maybe talking to your primary care provider to see what vitamins that you are deficient in and should be focusing on the most. For me, it is vitamin D. Even though I live here in the state of Texas, I am vitamin D deficient. So my provider kind of like shook her finger at me and put me on a high dose of vitamin D so we can correct that vitamin D deficiency. So you're starting with your primary care provider. That is what I would suggest and they would be able to kind of go over some more vitamins with you of what would be best to add to your routine already, what's best to take via vitamin, and what you could probably just get through regular supplementation in your diet. If you do find that you're having a hard time keeping up with your vitamin intake, a great way to supplement that would be through vitamin IV hydration therapy, or vitamin shots. Um, 
there are a lot of um, med spas and wellness clinics that offer these vitamin wellness shots. And I will tell you as someone who owns one of those businesses, it has been one of the biggest impacts in my life and in my wellness journey because I realized that it is one of the easiest ways for me to get my vitamins in. Um, now for me, since I have been on semaglutide, I have been on top of my vitamin B12. It is a fantastic source of energy for me. It keeps me going, but it also has helped to improve my metabolism and to help me burn fat. But there are so many other vitamins that you can add to your routine that can be taken via IV vitamin therapy if you are deficient and trying to catch up, or they can be taken in weekly um, intramuscular shots. Um, some of my favorite um, are vitamin C. Um, I do a combination of the Bs, a B complex shot, um, and then the B12. Um, I also do a lipotropic shot, and that lipotropic shot has um, B complex and B12 in it, as well as other lipotropic um, amino acids, which help you to burn fat, helps your body to focus on burning fat and helps you to um, lose more weight. So it works great in conjunction with my GLP-1 medications that I am on. And um, if you are interested in something like that, I would definitely recommend that you, number one, like I said, start with your primary care provider to see what you are deficient in and pop into one of your local wellness places, um, IV hydration wellness places or vitamin wellness shops. They will talk more to you about vitamins and what vitamins could be best for you based off of some of your signs and symptoms, like if you have dry skin and nails, dry hair, difficulty sleeping, and things like that. The next piece of advice I have is to tap into the things that make you happy. Now, there's a concept going around that I just saw on TikTok a couple weeks ago, and I thought it was very interesting, and it is called a dopamine list. Um, so pretty much the concept of a dopamine list is to create a list of things that make you happy, things that get you going, things that make you smile or just lift your spirits overall. And you write those things down on a short list. That is your dopamine list. Now, the great thing about a dopamine list is it's pretty much there for you. If you are feeling sad, you're feeling down, you're feeling depressed, you're having a bad day or if you have a bad habit that you are used to doing when you get bored, i.e. scrolling online on TikTok or on Instagram for long periods of time, the idea is instead of reaching for those bad things that give you that dopamine hit, like, I don't know, binge watching an entire season of your favorite show where you're not really doing anything productive or reaching for your favorite snack and maybe eating a whole bag of it, you would reach for something that is on your dopamine list or reach for your dopamine list and grab one of those items or do one of those items that is going to give you that dopamine hit, that energy, that extra razzle dazzle for you to go on with the rest of your day. Now, when I first saw this list, I thought it was absolutely genius. I've been doing a lot of research lately on ADHD, and that is one of the main things that people with ADHD struggle with is we are always looking for dopamine hits. So to be able to have a list of things that make you happy, that give you that extra zhuzh in the middle of your day when you're about to reach for something you probably shouldn't be reaching for, for me, it is social media. Um, I used to be a big snacker. I'm not a huge snacker anymore. Now that I've been on my semaglutide, I've been better about that. I still snack occasionally. Um, but I would say social media is my, my worst one. I tend to doom scroll a lot. And so that's something I really, really want to work on. So I myself am going to be starting my dopamine list and trying my best to use that instead of doing, um, instead of going down the rabbit hole of doom scrolling or just overeating that tends to happen to us when we are in our winter months. So if, if a dopamine list is something that you might be interested in, um, comment down below some cute ideas or some fun ideas that you would consider adding to your dopamine list. And I will comment um, under your comment and let you know if that's something that I was thinking about on mine as well. Now, some fun things that I'm interested in getting back into that I used to do that I thought was a lot of fun. And I don't know if it's adulting that kind of swayed me away from these things where I'm just so busy with my adult life that I don't have time for them anymore, but I know they bring me joy. Number one is dancing. I 
used to be a dancer in high school. I absolutely loved it. I wanted to be a professional dancer that when I grew up, <laughs> I was actually going to try out to be a professional dancer. Um, but I had to join the real world. I had to, uh, you know, get a real job and I really have not danced in a long time. So I have been looking into getting back into dance lessons. Um, I do dance like a lot in the house. I always used to create choreography and things like that. So just something fun. It doesn't have to be anything super duper technical or hard. I just want to get up and move my body to music and it's just something that makes me so happy. So is one of the main things that I'm going to be adding into my winter list, into my dopamine list, uh, on a short-term basis, like for dopamine hits, like maybe getting up and dancing once a day for like 20 minutes, but also going back to taking dancing lessons. Um, I have looked into um, doing like a intermediate jazz class um, and a hip-hop class because I just want to get out and dance and I just really enjoy doing it. So um, like I said, comment down below, let me know what you're going to be adding to your dopamine list. I would love to hear it. And I'd also love to hear, you know, some good ideas that maybe I didn't even consider adding to my list. We've come to the end. We're on the last tip that I have for you guys, but I promise you it is one of the most important ones. And that is to go to therapy. Now therapy has had some negative like connotations in the past. Um, maybe a bad rap in the past, but mental health has been pushed to the forefront of all of our attentions over the last couple of years. And I think for great reason, I love that the conversations about mental health are, um, more fluid and they are, um, we're getting rid of the stigma behind mental health. And so I would suggest for all of us, heck, that we should probably consider therapy. I think therapy is a great source um, to seek out the help that you might need and also just to have someone in your life to talk to, to bounce ideas off of and um, to work through things with. Therapy does not have to be something that is prescribed to you by your provider. You can always seek out therapy for yourself, whether it be a life situation or circumstances that you are trying to work through or you do know that you have a um, issue with seasonal depression and you want to try and get ahead of it, whatever the case may be, um, I feel like therapy is a great resource for all of us. So if you are interested in um, therapy, looking into local therapy sources, um, and it really doesn't even have to be, I guess, local. There are a lot of online therapists that you can see nowadays, which is a great resource that you're able to pop up your phone um, or your laptop and talk to someone. Um, and there are lots of different ranges. In the past, I know therapy used to be very expensive, so it wasn't something that we could all access, but there are a lot more resources nowadays for us to be able to get the help that we need. So I'm going to drop a couple of resources down below for you guys if you guys are interested in finding a therapist for yourself or someone to chat with um, or local therapy groups where you can do community group settings. Um, I will drop those down below for you guys, as well as once again, when you are going to see your primary care provider to talk to them about vitamins and nutrition, you could always talk to your primary care provider to see if therapy is something that could be possibly covered by your insurance. Um, and a lot of insurances do cover that and it's a phenomenal resource if your insurance does cover it to look into it. Um, but therapy is a phenomenal resource, you guys. Now, in my opinion, the best part about going to therapy is talking to someone who is a professional. There's nothing you're going to tell them that is off the wall that they have never heard before. But beyond that, they have a plethora of resources to help you to get through whatever you're going through. They are able to give you resources and tools to help you to manage your stress and also different ideas that you may have never thought about before to get through whatever circumstances you're going through. So tap into the resources listed below and also contact your primary care provider to see if you could possibly get therapy through your insurance. We've gone over a long list of some wonderful ideas of how we are going to fight this winter sadness. We're not gonna be sad girls or sad boys this winter. We are going to fight through the seasonal depression. 
Comment down below and let me know which ideas you plan on adding to your routine um, to fight seasonal depression this year. And let me know if there's any cool ideas that I completely missed. I would love to hear your input um, and some ideas that have worked for you guys in the past as well. If this video was helpful for you, make sure to leave a comment down below, like the video, and share it with your friends and family. And until next time, see you guys soon.